As your game becomes longer, you may want a way for players to save what's going on in the game and come back to it later. And a very simple way to do that is using a file type called .ini, which stands for initialize. It usually stores options for setting resolutions, for sound, for whatever, so that every time someone launches your game, the INI file is read, and then all of those variables are inputted so the game starts up the way they wanted it to and how they left it last time. However, you can use this to your advantage when saving other variables for your game. Now, I've just got two scripts here that I'm using. I've got INI save and INI load, because that's what we're going to need to do. Now, there's something to understand about the structure of an INI file. It has three parts. It has a section, a key, and a value. Now, I'm going to open up an INI file. By default, GameMaker saves it under your username, app data, local, and then the name of your game that you're working on. In this case, INI files tut, INI files tut. This is it. I'm calling it save.ini. Here's what one looks like. In the braces, I've got my section, and I've named it player1, and then I've got a key, which is score and name, and then a value associated with it. In this case, I've got 50 and my name. Now, they don't normally look like that. Normally, they would not exist. They would be blank until you actually save information to the INI file, but I've already been playing around with this tutorial. Now that you understand the structure of an INI file, we can look at how to save and load. The function INI open opens up this file behind the scenes while the game is running in one step. So it's like imperceivable to the player. But it's necessary for the computer to open it to start manipulating it like reading or writing. In this case for saving, we're going to be writing values to this INI file. And there are two you can use. One is INI write string and then INI write real. Of course, string is for words and real is for numbers. Each one has three arguments. The first one is the section. If you remember, that's the one in the braces. So you can have multiple sections, like this is player one, but then you can have one that says sound and then all the sound options, one that says um, level and which enemies are dead and which ones are alive, which items you have. It's just a way of organizing it for yourself, really. Then you have the key, and this is kind of like a variable, I'm putting that in quotation marks, variable for the INI file, that you're going to be storing some sort of value. In this one, we'll need a string, and I'm going to use my name. That's a variable I have inside GameMaker that is storing the string jack. And then for score, I have a real being stored inside this variable current score. Then when you're done, it's very important to close the INI file. You don't want that left open and holding up memory, and you also don't want it left open because if you try to write to a different INI file, the game will get confused. It'll keep writing to the same one. Got to close it for the game to move on. Now for loading, there are different things we can do, but I'm just going to concentrate on the simplest thing to look at, which is INI open. We're just going to open it up again, quite simply. And now this is where it's a little different. We use the functions INI read instead of write. Once again, just string and real. And three arguments again, the section it wants to read from, the key it is then looking for, and then default. What this means is if you open up the INI file and the game finds that there's nothing there, then it's got to have something. It's got to find something. So what it's going to do is write this value into the INI and store it in a variable. That's what I'm doing here. This is so we can use it in our game later. So if it doesn't find the name Jack, which is what I've saved, it'll change it to no name, store that in the variable my name, and then we can print that to the game that's running so people know, hey, no name was found or whatever is necessary. It's the same for current score. If no score is found, just make it zero, but we still want to be able to read from it so that our INI file is nice, clean, everything's the way it should be. And remember, we should close it when we're done. That's all going to sound confusing until we actually look at what's happening in the game. Now, I've only got two objects to keep this simple because we're only looking at the basics. When my room starts, this is an object controller. It doesn't really do anything but control all of the kind of like meta code outside of my actual interactive objects. So when the room starts, I'm going to declare two global variables, current score and my name, and I'm going to set current score to zero and my name to Jack. So every time the room starts, that's what will happen. Then I'm just going to draw it out to the screen. You can pause it here if you want to read it, but I'm going to skip through it. It's not really that important. L 
will run the INI load, S will run the INI save, so just load and save, and R will reset the room. That's just some global controls for me to make this tutorial a little easier to understand. Now in my room I've got these object blocks, and of course, the object controller. They don't really do much, to be honest. It's just if you click on them, increment my score by 10, and then get destroyed. It's really simple, it's just to mock up what your game might be doing. So if I actually run this game, you'll see that at the top I'm printing my name and I'm printing the current score. So let's start messing with that. Let's click on some of these. And there we go. My, now my score is 40. And if I hit S, that now, see, imperceivable to you because really we're not saving a lot of data. So you didn't see any kind of like spinning wheel near my arrow like it's taking a long time to do. That's saved. So if I reset the room, everything will be back to how it was. So my name is still Jack. We've got zero for the score. Now if I hit L to load, what will happen? Let me close this INI file and open it up again. Here's what we did. We saved my name and the score. Remember it was 40 and there it is. But if I go back to the game and I hit L to load, there we go. 40 has now been pulled out of that INI file, passed into this variable, and printed out to the screen. There are a few other things we can do. There are ways to manipulate the sections and keys. Now in this case, I'm going to see if INI key exists. I just want to know, is this here? Is this key name existing? Is it in player one name? If so, I'm going to delete it. So now... If I were to save my file and try to load it, when it loads it up, it's going to look inside and say, okay, now, does he have a name? Yeah? Delete it. We don't want that section to be there. Now when it comes to read string, it's going to pass in the default of my name. Say this default down here. So it's going to give no name to my name because I deleted my name from the save file. So let's see what that looks like now that I've changed it. Okay, so I'm back in the room. My name is Jack, my score is zero. It's quite simple, just the way I had it before. Now let's just start clicking around. Okay, my score is now 60. Let's save that. So it's saved. Let's open up the INI file. There it is, 60, and my name is Jack. Perfect, that's what we want. However, if we hit load, well, let's reset the room. There we go. So we reset the room, now let's hit load. My name does not exist anymore. And that's because I told GameMaker to look in the INI file, and if it found that the section, player one, and the key name existed, just delete it. And then if it can't find something, call it no name. But it still pulled out the score. I could do the same thing to score if I really wanted to. In fact, I could delete an entire section too. So there we go. If I delete this entire section, everything will be gone. So that's, that's not just my name, now it's also the score, and really anything that's in there. So it's a good way to kind of reset a section, like let's say you wanted to set everything back to default. You can just say this, okay, open it up, and just delete the whole section, everything's going to be back to default if you write in your defaults here. So in that case, when I run my game, let's just click on a whole bunch of stuff, make all of them disappear. Okay, I'm going to hit S, save. So my name's Jack, 80, let's prove it. Jack, 80, that's what's in the INI file. But if I reset the room, okay, so Jack and zero. If I hit load, no name and zero. It was already zero, but it's to prove that I didn't get 80 back. I got zero. So if I open up that INI file again, it's just blank. There's actually just nothing there. I just deleted everything inside. I deleted the player one section. Of course, although you've noticed, I had the defaults set up right here. These don't get saved, I'm just pulling them into these variables whenever I load. But if I save now, it will put no name and zero. But anyway, it's a good way to kind of reset certain sections or certain keys inside your INI file. Of course, this could be expanded upon. You can do a loop, any kind of for or, or while loop, whatever kind of loop you need, even repeat to go through certain values and variables in your game, like which instances are there. You can check the instance IDs of everything, store those, and their X and Y positions. Like it's really complicated, but it is possible, or anything really. But as I said, INI is usually an initialization 
kind of file. So it usually holds options. And the reason for that is because it's not encrypted. There's no obfuscation. There's no, there's nothing really. It's plain text. You should be able to just read it, which means anyone can open it and then just manipulate it. They can change their high score. They can change whatever. And this is technically true for everything. It's true for Android and, and iOS. I mean, you could jailbreak or root these devices and then get into the files and change them. But um, the standard person may not do that. Point being, if your I and I variables are not that important, you're not scoring high scores like on networks or whatever, it doesn't really matter if players get to change these things. But if you do, then you will need to obfuscate or encrypt. And we'll go over that in another video. But for now, these are just the basics. And it's actually really simple to do.